Kuti, a PhD from IIC Bengaluru in 2013. And after that, he did several postdoc. So uh, he moved to uh, uh, Europe in uh, for, as a Nordic Nordita postdoctoral fellow uh, in Sweden, Stockholm, uh, in Sweden. And then uh, he was between 2016 to 2018. He was a Jack Eddy postdoc fellow at High Altitude of High Altitude Observatory uh, in USA. After that, he moved back to India. And uh, he joined as a Chandrasekhar postdoc fellow at uh, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Bengaluru. Uh, and shortly after, he uh, joined as an assistant professor uh, in Indian Institute, of, sorry, Indian Institute of Technology, IIT BHU, uh, where he is currently working. And he is also a Ramanujan fellow, uh, fellow from DST. He has received many awards, so I will not mention all of them, but uh, to mention a few. Uh, in 2013, he received the best thesis award uh, from Astronomical Society of India. And uh, in 2019, he received INSA Young Scientist Medal uh, from uh, Indian National Science Academy. And recently in 2021, he received a Humboldt Research Fellowship uh, from Germany. So, and Vidya is interested in uh, um, solar and stellar uh, astrophysics. So, uh, Vidya, uh, you can, the floor is yours and you can start your presentation. Thank you, Suvendu. Uh, thank you very much uh, to all of you. Um, yeah, I'm very glad uh, to be invited to give uh, my uh, presentation. I'd uh, love to be uh, in Aries and give this presentation in person, uh, but uh, I avoided travel uh, during this time. Maybe uh, in the very near future, I'll uh, be uh, going to Aries and we'll have uh, more interaction and discussion. Okay, so uh, before I uh, start, I uh, let me introduce my uh, PhD student. Uh, so Akas Bissas uh, here, uh, his work will be presented. Uh, and then uh, Pavan Kumar, his work will also be highlighted. And then we have India and Onu, their work will be briefly uh, mentioned somewhere. Okay. And then uh, I thank also my other collaborator, Vibhuti Jha, Sri Mandal Dukhuda. Uh, okay, so uh, we all know uh, uh, the solar cycle, the number of sunspot observed on the surface is very uh, uh, roughly cyclically uh, with an average period of 11 years. Okay, so here's a plot that shows the number of, uh, I mean, the total area covered by the sunspot as a function of the time in year. Okay. Um, so we see that uh, the uh, cycle amplitude, the strength uh, is, is varying a lot from one cycle to the next. And uh, uh, there, uh, there are a lot of uh, features you see that are north south asymmetry, the north and south, they are not same. And uh, there are some irregularity within the cycle. Okay. And one uh, very popular uh, feature is called Walmer effect, which is the strong cycle, they rise rapidly, whereas the weak cycle, they rise uh, slowly. Okay. Uh, and uh, many other uh, stars, particularly the sun-like stars, uh, which have a convection zone in the outer uh, part, uh, in the outer layer, uh, they uh, also so uh, cycle. Okay. Uh, so we know, uh, I mean, we have a measurement of the of, of, uh, of, of emission uh, in H and K lines from this calcium, uh, singly ionized calcium. So uh, that was actually recorded in uh, Mount Wilson Observatory, this company called HK Project, and they provided data uh, for uh, uh, for about uh, four uh, about three uh, decade. Uh, and we know uh, that other stars uh, do so uh, cycle. So here I uh, saw some good cycle, I mean, good uh, uh, star, which so good cycle. But again, uh, you see that the, uh, there's quite a lot of variation in their amplitude okay? uh, in almost all the uh, star. Here is Sun, by the way, yeah? for the same duration. Uh, so, uh, solar cycle and uh, uh, stellar cycle are irregular. So, I'll actually discuss the solar cycle uh, in this talk. Uh, so, the irregularity, uh, I mean, to understand the irregularity, you need to understand the mechanism of the, uh, uh, of the solar cycle. This is the dynamo mechanism. Okay. 
and uh, that uh, actually encouraged me to understand the nonlinear processes in the dynamo and if you understand that then only you can uh, uh, make some prediction Okay, so uh, let's begin uh, with the dynamo uh, model. I mean, the basic idea of the dynamo is the uh, following, is the oscillation between uh, two uh, uh, component of magnetic field, the poloidal uh, uh, field uh, and the toroidal field. Poloidal uh, field in the solar convection zone is uh, seared by the um, uh, uh, differential rotation and produce uh, this toroidal, the azimuthal uh, field. And uh, this we know because the sun uh, has a strong uh, difference rotation, the equatorial region rotate faster than the polar region. Then this toroidal field is believed, uh, is believed that the toroidal field gives uh, uh, sun spot uh, or more generally the bipolar magnetic region. Okay, so you see that uh, two sunspot uh, sitting next to each other. So sunspot are actually uh, uh, bipolar in, in nature. So these are called bipolar magnetic region. And they have a certain polarity rule. You see the, the white, the, the positive polarity, there's the outward field is uh, sitting a uh, uh, little bit closer to the equator and on uh, towards the right, okay, towards the east side. Okay, and in the other hemisphere, we see the opposite uh, uh, polarity, opposite pattern, okay. So uh, uh, there's something called a hell polarity rule. Okay? So uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this polarity information uh, will actually convince you that, uh, that the toroidal field uh, is actually gives rise to the sunspot. So there is of course some theory which explain the formation of sunspot from toroidal field, but without going through this theory, I'll just explain that if you imagine that there's a toroidal field inside the convex zone, and if a part of this field rise, up the surface and then uh, we expect bipolar spot like here should magnetic field should be coming out and here magnetic field should be going uh, in and that's how we get the the uh, bipolar magnetic region with the with with this polarity okay and in the up, uh, uh, southern hemisphere the field must be in opposite direction that's why we get opposite polarity uh, um, uh, bipolar magnetic region and another interesting feature is that this bipolar magnetic region has little tilt. So if you join the center of the, of the pole uh, uh, of uh, the BMR, then you find that they, they have little angle with this equatorial line. Okay. So this is the famous uh, Joyce law, which was uh, discovered uh, by Georgi Hill uh, in 1919. And uh, uh, this says that, uh, that the tilt uh, of a BMR uh, is equal to some constant, which is about 32 degree sign of the latitude where the BMR is emerged. And this is such an important uh, formula, uh, important law that we write paper every year. So even after 100 years of its discovery, we keep on uh, you know, uh, uh, studying Joyce's law. Now, why tilt is important? Because of this tilt, uh, when transport decay and disperse uh, their flux, they don't cancel completely. Okay? Uh, this uh, uh, they give uh, a, a, a net uh, field that is a polaroidal field. So what essentially happened in this process? So the the the, the leading polarity, the, the the pole which is near the uh, uh, near the the part which is uh, the the part of a BMR which is near the equator, uh, they cancel with the flux from the uh, opposite uh, uh, opposite uh, pole. Uh, of the BMR, that is the leading polarity. So the white and black, they cancel, I mean, largely cancel, of course there are cancellation among themselves, but uh, uh, there is a, you know, uh, um, uh, um, I mean, the, the trailing polarity uh, 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 will be uh, moved uh, towards the pole and it will produce some non-zero polaroidal field. Okay. Now that was the uh, idea given by Babcock and Leighton in 60s when we had very little uh, uh, knowledge of the uh, solar magnetic field and the bipolar magnetic region, but the idea was really great. And we, we can, of course, uh, 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 see this very nicely in a model. So here I, I'm showing a picture where I have deposited two BMR, bipolar magnetic region, very near the equator. They have very little tilt. You see this line. Now I'll run an animation. Okay, so this, this bipolar magnetic region, they decay and disperse. So in this model, this difference rotation, that's why you see the equatorial part is uh, move uh, uh, faster than the polar region and this turbulent diffusion and uh, there's some uh, pole were uh, made in a flow that goes from equator to pole. So all these process allow this 
this spot decay and disperse in such a way that you get some non-zero field near the uh, um, pole. Okay, that's the that's the dipole field that we uh, are familiar. So the red is the outward field and black, uh, the blue is the inward field. Okay, so we get some non-zero uh, poloidal field out of this uh, um, uh, DMR because they have little tilt. Okay, so this is not new. Okay, so the the, the movie I have taken from the uh, from uh, a Dino model, but the idea is not new. Idea was proposed by Babcock and Leighton. What we do, we uh, try to uh, get more and more support from observation. So we have a lot of data uh, um, in a recent year, uh, data on magnetic field, data on transport, and their other their properties. And based on uh, those data, we actually uh, uh, saw that uh, this process indeed operate in the uh, on the surface and 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 and, and produce poloidal field. Okay, so if you want to uh, just describe the very simple uh, zero to level picture, then it is this one. The poloidal gives toroidal. To define zero to cent or to give poloidal. Of course, it's a very simple picture. Okay, but uh, for this talk, this simple picture is enough. Okay. Now, this is a model we call like a Babcock Layton uh, uh, Dino model or Babcock Layton type uh, model. Okay. In real sun, of course, uh, uh, we have another candidate that uh, possibly this helical alpha might be operating. Of course, when you uh, do uh, uh, rotating convex simulation, you can easily get uh, this helical, this lifting twisting uh, process uh, through which the toroidal field can be, you know, uh, twist and produce poloidal uh, component. Okay? But uh, we are, um, uh, I mean, we have limited uh, our knowledge from observation on this uh, process. On the other hand, this Babcock Leighton process is very, you know, uh, uh, well understood from observation. And we have a recent model uh, based on this Babcock Leighton process, which explain many observed features of the solar cycle and solar magnetic field. So my talk is actually based on uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, basic uh, dynamo loop. Okay. Now, what are known and what are unknown in this? Okay, so the poloidal to toroidal, uh, uh, this part is fairly understood because the difference rotation is uh, is known at least for like a, a, a thirty years in the uh, convex zone. We have very precisely known the difference rotation, and we find that there's very little uh, variation in it. Okay, and in fact, on the surface, we have uh, measurement of the differential rotation for last uh, 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 few uh, decades, a uh, 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 few centuries. Okay, uh, so and we know that differential rotation has very uh, little variation. So this uh, process is is very uh, well understood. Okay, and possibly this is a this is at least largely linear process. Okay, on the other hand, the toroidal to poloidal part. Uh, uh, this this part is poorly understood, and uh, and uh, I and uh, some other group are actually trying to uh, uh, understand this part. Okay, so we need good data for the poloidal field uh, so that we can make connection, uh, make comparison uh, with the model and the observation. Okay. Uh, and then we need to understand this process, how the toroidal field gives transport, how this transport or the bipolar magnetic regions get tilled, how they decay and how much toroidal field is produced, all these processes actually we, tr we actually try to understand, okay? And in fact, uh, we'll show that, the, that we have some nonlinearity, okay, in this process, okay? And this nonlinearity are responsible for saturating the magnetic field, okay? And that is, my main motivation uh, of the talk. So I'll discuss the 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 the, the potential uh, uh, candidate for the nonlinearity. Uh, okay, so nonlinearity is important, particularly in this dynamo model. I, as I said, that this part is largely linear. So we need some mechanism which actually hold the uh, the growth of magnetic field. Okay. Particularly when you do kinematic dynamo model, we just solve this equation. Okay, equation for this uh, Babcock Leighton uh, process, just the induction equation with the source term. Okay, so we need uh, some mechanism which hold the growth of the uh, magnetic field, and and we if we actually impose nonlinearity. Okay, but we should know, we should understand what type of nonlinearity is, is operating in the uh, uh, the real sun. 
Okay. So I'll discuss three uh, uh, different uh, nonlinearity. So one is the tilt quenching, the tilt of the bipolar magnetic region. There has quenching, and there's something called latitudinal quenching, and there is something called stordal flux loss due to magnetic buoyancy. Okay, so first I'll discuss the tilt quenching. Okay, so the tilt, as I said, the tilt of the BMR plays a critical role in generating poloidal field in the Babcock Leighton process. Without tilt, you won't get any uh, magnetic field. Okay. Now, in in <coughs> in Dino model, <coughs> we take uh, for many years we are actually routinely including a quenching. Okay, like we have a source for the poloidal field. I'm not going through the technical term, but I'm just saying that, that there is a source. Okay, there is a term called the source for poloidal field through the Babcock Leighton process. There we multiply a term is the uh, you know popular alpha quenching term one by one plus b by b zero square okay in many dynamo model we use in fact in recent uh, dynamo model where we have explicit bipolar magnetic re uh, regime and there we include a quenching in the tilt okay if the magnetic field exceed a certain value okay b zero okay or is comparable then this quantity is smaller than one that means the tilt will be less now less tilt means you'll get less poloidal field okay so that's how we we we, we actually saturate the uh, uh, magnetic field growth okay now the question is i mean uh, i mean is it supported by observation okay now the idea behind this formula uh, is actually uh, uh, it lies in the theory okay so uh, uh, the, 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 there 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 is a model called thin flux tube uh, model which explain uh, you know some properties of the sunspot okay so in 90s and in 80s you know uh, this model was very popular and explained uh, you know, many interesting results okay so uh, the in this model the the this very strong toroidal field okay they become intermediate uh, and they form flux tubes so uh, you can imagine like the tube of toroidal field they rise in the convex end zone and when they rise uh, then during their rise the the uh, the plasma they tend to fall so from the apex of this of this loop the plasma tend to fall so they have they will have azimuthal flow because of this azimuthal flow as the flow is in opposite direction uh, uh, from the center of this apex there will be a, a a net torque due to the coriolis force okay and that leads to uh, tilt okay now now in this picture you expect that like if the magnetic field in the flux tube is strong then the flux tube will rise quickly. So now quick rise means the toroidal, uh, the Coriolis force get less time to induce tilt. Okay, so strong magnetic field will uh, uh, generate less tilt in the sunspot. Okay, and uh, in the theory, okay, so uh, almost at the same time, uh, Fan et al. Uh, and then D. Silva and Choudhury, they gave a formula. Okay, so the formula is quite complicated, but physically, I mean, based on this model, you expect that the tilt should be less when the magnetic field is strong. Okay, so that was the idea behind this formula. But the question is, does this this is supported by observation? Okay, so uh, so uh, there was a study uh, by uh, uh, Dasi is spewing it all in. Uh, 2010 and then followed by uh, uh, Jiao et al. They showed that the that strong cycle have on an average the the uh, tilt of the transport the average tilt of the transport is less. Okay, so strong cycle has average uh, tilt. Uh, um, okay, in the transport. So, uh, but that was the the average over the whole cycle, and also that was uh, based on the uh, white light uh, data uh, of the sunspot. Okay, so what we did, we studied this problem. We identify the bipolar magnetic region from magnetogram. Okay, because in magnetogram we can identify the polarity of the suns sunspot. Okay, so we can uh, 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 compute the exact tilt. Okay. And uh, uh, then we, uh, yeah, so we use the data from uh, uh, two space based instrument, MDI and HMI uh, during this time. So we have roughly the data for two solar cycle. Okay, unfortunately, last two solar cycle was quite weak. Okay, so um, 
uh, uh, but based on uh, those data, we computed uh, computed uh, this quantity. The uh, the uh, slope. First, we feed the data with the Joyce law, and then computed the, the uh, slope of Joyce law. Okay, so that we get rid of this latitude dependence. Okay, so this plot shows the the slope of Joyce law as a function of the uh, uh, magnetic field strength in the sun spot. Okay, so this plot tells. Okay, okay. So initially, there is the the trend is quite complicated. It actually increased. Okay, and then only when the magnetic field is no, uh, significantly above uh, the kilo gauss, then we see some some decreasing trend. Okay, in both the data set. Okay, now we have limited data. Okay, this much we can only uh, infer from the observation and uh, observed data. Okay, we are uh, of course uh, you know, trying to uh, understand the robustness robustness of this uh, result. Okay, but uh, at least these plots give a, a, a indication that there is a you know sort of quenching that as the magnetic fields become stronger, the field actually decreases. Okay, at least when the magnetic field is quite high. Okay. Uh, and this is also in uh, in agreement with the uh, previous uh, study and also the theoretical idea which is available uh, uh, since 90s okay so that was the uh, uh, till quenching now uh, uh, next uh, is the uh, next i'll discuss the flux loss uh, due to magnetic buoyancy okay so i said that toroidal field gives rise to the uh, uh, to the transport of bipolar magnetic region. So is there any useful information we can get, uh, get from this? Okay. So again, we uh, we shall consider the observation. Okay. So here is a butterfly diagram of sunspot. I did not discuss it earlier, but this is again a popular um, uh, plot uh, in the solar physics. Okay. So as, as the cycle begins, sunspot appear at a somewhat mid latitude, and then with the time they propagate towards the equator. Okay. This is a popular butterfly diagram. Okay. Now, uh, uh, if you just take the one year data, okay, just in one year, how many uh, uh, you, you take the data of the sunspot, okay, you just take the latitude of the sunspot, okay, and then you plot it, okay. Uh, so this this is for the uh, for a uh, one year data from a strong cycle, and this one is a, uh, from one year data from a weak cycle, okay, the red line. Okay? So you see that their distribution in latitude can be approximated by Gaussian. Okay, and with the time, with the time, the center of this distribution move towards the equator. That's the equator of migration, right? Okay. So now, if you if you analyze the the trajectory of this center or the mean latitude of this transport distribution as a function uh, of the uh, um, so here is a, uh, a plot. So that shows the center of the distribution lambda c okay center of this distribution or the mean latitude okay and this is plotted with this transport number in one year band in one year how many transport you get okay so essentially y axis shows the strength of the activity okay activity level okay now obviously in this plot this right side is the starting of a cycle different call different profile uh, corresponds to different cycle so you have about 12 cycle shown by 12 different colors and you see the, uh, the so on the right side cycle begin so this is quite complicated plot but you have to connect with this so at the beginning of a cycle transport appears somewhere mid latitude okay so that's why you see the uh, uh, the plot start the the profile start from here okay and then the trajectory goes and end on the left side okay and this is the activity level okay now you see some some interesting feature the strong cycle like this one, that one, this one. So their activity level increase very rapidly. Okay, there's something called Walmart effect. I said the strong cycle rise rapidly. Okay, weak cycle, weak cycle they rise slowly. Okay, now, okay, so that's why this weak cycle they rise slowly. Okay, but for strong cycle you see that rise rapidly, and then the center of this distribution they begin to decline already when this distribution center is at high latitude okay but for a weak cycle they rise slowly they start from low latitude rise slowly and then they move the, the, the distribution move all the way to very low latitude and then decline but the decline part 
is similar for all the cycle. Okay. This is based on observation. Of course, you have limited data and data are noisy, but we see some train. Okay. Now, is this giving you some useful information? Okay. Well, there's another thing that distribution, uh, uh, the distribution width. Okay. When you have a strong cycle, the distribution width is much wider. Okay. The FWHM is, is larger. Okay. So for strong cycle, FWHM is larger. It increases rapidly and then it begins to decline already when the, the center lambda c center is already at high latitude for weak cycle okay it begin to decline at low latitude okay we try to explain these features okay so this is result from dyna model we use a dyna model it's very simple and it has very inter it captures very interesting things that i'll discuss uh, uh, in the next slide okay so here's the uh, location where the transport are produced from the model okay and then we did the same analysis we took the latitude information in every year okay and we took the center of this distribution we computed the width of the distribution and then we made the same plot as obtained in the observation okay and we see that you know some similar trend some similar results are reproduced particularly you see the strong cycle the red one their activity level begin at somewhat high latitude you see the starting of a cycle here okay red are the strong cycle blue are the mediocre mediocre cycle and they are, they start somewhere at mid latitude okay somewhat at lower latitude and then the, the weakest cycle they begin uh, somewhere at very low latitude and then they rise slowly strong cycle rise very rapidly okay the walmire effect that is captured rise rapidly and then begin to decline already when this distribution band is at higher latitude weak cycle they decline uh, at somewhat lower latitude okay so the similar pattern that was obtained in observable for FWHM, the width of the distribution, we get a very good agreement. Okay, you see that the center, uh, the the the, uh, the maximum of FWHM, okay, is uh, at higher latitude, and this this blue is for moderate cycle, and this for uh, weak cycle. You see that uh, the point where they where this FWHM begin to decline, and then after. Uh, uh, this point, all the cycle take the same path. Okay. Now, how to explain this result? Now, to explain this result, let me explain the uh, basic uh, mechanism how the toroidal field is produced and it's uh, propagated towards the equator. So, this this here's the animation which shows the one complete solar cycle. So, this solid contour shows the poloidal field. Okay. So, poloidal field is generated near the surface due to uh, uh, this percolating process and then it's transported diffusion and also abducted by medium flow and then in the convex and zone you have a strong defense rotation it and particularly in high latitude defense rotation is high it produces toroidal field in somewhat high and mid latitude and then it drag by the medium flow towards the equator okay so this is this this uh, this color uh, shows the uh, uh, toroidal field at the base of the convex and zone as a function of latitude in y axis and time along x axis. So you see uh, 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 that, uh, okay, so here you, B, this line is the B equal to BC. Okay, now in our model, we have a, a very simple mechanism to capture the, uh, uh, capture the uh, uh, magnetic buoyancy. Okay, uh, so uh, what does model, uh, what the model does? The model, uh, uh, every you know, every certain time step, the model check uh, uh, check the magnetic field. If the magnetic field exceed a value BC at any grid point, okay, above uh, base of the convex and zone, then the model note that point, okay, the, uh, and at that point, at the surface, at the same latitude, the toroidal field, the half of that field is actually added and that half is reduced okay so at that point the b will be reduced uh, uh, to uh, b by 2 and that b by 2 this uh, this this half will be added to the surface okay so this is a very simple way to capture the magnetic buoyancy it was the idea was given by this Hello. 
net is down or what yeah it seems vidya's net is down because i can hear it clearly yeah, yeah. we can hear and we can see yeah yeah he i think just did got disconnected probably so he'll... yeah it is very strange that in the same building uh, we have uh, some student uh -huh. we have connection okay oh, okay okay yeah good good we are uh, we are back okay so okay. Uh, i mean i don't know where i lost uh, my connection somewhere here in this slide i guess uh, I yeah okay so um, yeah i'll uh, begin uh, from here uh, so in this model, uh, we have a mechanism that if the magnetic field uh, in the base of the convex zone, okay, magnetic field at any point above the base of the convex zone, uh, if it exit uh, exit a certain value B C, then at that point uh, uh, the that field is reduced by half, and that half is added to the surface. Okay. So that's how uh, this magnetic winds is captured. Okay? Is the idea that was included in uh, Surya Dino model uh, by uh, Nundi Chaudhuri and Chatterjee. And uh, uh, this simple idea uh, will actually explain uh, this, um, uh, uh, the features that we uh, discussed. Okay, so, uh, 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 so let's uh, see the result. Uh, okay. Yeah, so here you see that um, uh, for when you have a strong cycle, 
for example, here you have a strong cycle. For strong cycle, magnetic field is strong everywhere. Okay. So then B greater than BC condition is satisfied already when the toroidal field is at somewhat higher latitude. Okay. So that's why the strong cycle, in strong cycle, the magnetic the B greater than BC condition is satisfied, and we get some spot in the higher uh, somewhat at higher latitude. And then strong cycle has a stronger magnetic field. Okay. And a strong magnetic field, it gives a lot of uh, sunspot. So the activity level increases very rapidly. So that's the Walmart effect. Okay, activity level. Uh, you see this y-axis increases very rapidly. Okay, and uh, and then in rapid uh, uh, activity level increase means that the the toroidal flux will also be lost rapidly because at every eruption the toroidal field is reduced by half. Okay, so. That's the magnetic buoyancy in this model. Okay, so when you have a lot of sunspot eruption, means the toroidal flux is lost rapidly. Okay, from the base of the, uh, I mean, from the convex and zone. Okay, so then very quickly the magnetic field will reach uh, to BC, and when the magnetic field is comparable to BC, then uh, uh, then any further increase in the toroidal field will be compensated by the new uh, emergence. Okay, and the activity level will not increase anymore. It will actually tend to decrease. Okay, for a weak cycle, the magnetic field is weak, and uh, that's why that this uh, this uh, uh, dynamo needs time to satisfy this condition. And by that time, the magnetic field will be dragged towards the equator. Okay, and that's why the, we get this uh, 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 sunspot eruption uh, from somewhat a low latitude, and the weak cycle rises uh, slowly. That's the Walmart effect. And then uh, when this B uh, equal to BC condition uh, uh, is reached, uh, then uh, all cycle uh, follow the same trajectory. For FWHM, the width of the distribution is same because strong cycle, the magnetic field is strong everywhere. So that we get some spot eruption uh, uh, in uh, uh, wider uh, extent. Okay. For weak cycles, uh, magnetic field is weak, so we get some spot at a uh, uh, in a narrow uh, uh, range. Okay, so uh, in fact, when you see that uh, that if you if you switch up the magnetic buoyancy, okay, that's the magnet the flux loss due to magnetic buoyancy. If you switch up that, then we don't get these features. You see that this is the result without uh, the flux loss by magnetic buoyancy. Then you see the all the cycle has the peak at the same uh, uh, latitude. Okay. So, which is not uh, uh, in observation. Okay, so the next thing is the latitudinal quenching. So, latitudinal quenching is uh, is is, uh, is related again to the observation. So, observation says that when you have a strong cycle like this cycle, the overall the the on an average the latitude of the sunspot is large. Okay, so this is seen better in this plot. And in fact, it was uh, uh, pointed out by Solan Kital that when you have a strong cycle the latitude, the mean latitude of a cycle is large. Okay, so there's a positive correlation. And this was uh, also uh, uh, studied uh, by uh, Sudip Mandal and us uh, 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 using you know, many other uh, data and we find robust uh, correlation that strong cycle uh, has uh, 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 average mean latitude, okay. And uh, other group also find this relation. Now, what this uh, now this result along with this another along with uh, another result uh, that this BMR, uh, if a BMR or sunspot appear at higher latitude, then it produces less poloidal field. Okay. So uh, to explain this, I'll show uh, two animation. So here I have a two BMR deposited at 25 degree latitude. Here I have two BMR. They are deposited at two degree latitude, very near the equator. Okay, that's why they have very little tilt also, because tilt is related to the latitude. Okay, so all other things are same except the latitudinal position are different and tilt are different. Okay, now you see that the the BMR pair which is appearing high latitude, they will give less field. Okay, I'll show this. Okay, so the uh, so again this is from Dynamo model. Uh, where we have uh, uh, almost all the you know physical uh, 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 mechanism like the diffuse rotation, Meidner flow, and then turbulent diffusion. Okay, all these are included in this model, and uh, uh, and I'll show that after a few years uh, we'll get uh, we get uh, less polar field when, uh, for this case when the BMR appear at 25 degree latitude gives less poloidal field. 
with respect to the BMR that appear near the equator at low latitude. Okay, so that means the BMR at at higher latitude they produce less poloidal field. Okay, now this is this was known from something called surface flux transport model. Okay. Uh, 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 for 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 uh, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for several years, we know that this is uh, this is the case. But uh, in Dyna model, it was not uh, uh, reproduced. In fact, Hajra, Choudhury, and Mies uh, they found opposite trend. Okay, so uh, 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 because that that model did not capture the uh, uh, the fact that the magnetic field on the surface needs to be vertical. Okay. Magnetic field should be radial on the surface. So in this model, magnetic field is radial near the surface, so that turbulent diffusion does not actually uh, uh, allow the magnetic field to diffuse much. Okay, um, and we uh, get uh, this result that BMR at, at at larger latitude produce less less poloidal field. Okay. Uh, so uh, now with this, uh, let's uh, uh, see how this latitude and quenching operate. Okay, so consider a cycle is strong. Okay, let's say somehow a cycle, a solar cycle has become strong. Now, solar strong solar cycle means it will give a transport at higher latitude. Okay, that is that is the observed fact. Okay, strong cycle will have BMR or transport at high latitude. Okay, now BMR at high latitude gives less poloidal field. Okay, now less poloidal field will give less uh, toroidal field. That means the next cycle is going to be weak. So if you start with a strong cycle, if you, you end up uh, to a weak cycle. So indefinite uh, growth of the magnetic field is hold. Okay, so that is the idea that was proposed by uh, G. G. Young uh, uh, two years back, and it's called the latitude and quenching. And almost at the same time, I explored this in the Dyna model, and we realized that this mechanism, you know, uh, works. Uh, uh, and uh, in the model, and it explain the saturation of magnetic field. We do not need any other mechanism for the saturation of magnetic field. Okay, so these are the nonlinearity in the uh, model. Okay, but I said that mm, that this part poloidal to toroidal uh, uh, is deterministic. Okay, because the difference in rotation is known, then toroidal field gives transport. Okay, so if you know the poloidal field, let's say for cycle. And in, indeed, the radial part of the poloidal field is actually measured from, uh, uh, on the surface. We have measurement of the ma magnetic field on the surface, uh, uh, the radial magnetic field on the surface for last, um, actually the line of sight magnetic field measurement we have uh, for last um, about uh, 40 years. And uh, sorry, uh, yeah, last about 40 years. And 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 uh, so we, if you give the poloidal field uh, on cycle N, then we can predict the toroidal field and that is that uh, uh, sunspot for the n plus one. So this is the basis of the solar cycle prediction that at the solar minimum, when the poloidal field is at maximum and we take that magnetic field, we put that in this type of model and we predict the amplitude of the next cycle. Okay, so this was the idea and this idea was available for quite some time, but this idea was captured uh, uh, in Dynao model and made the first successful prediction of the solar cycle uh, by Choudhury, Jiang, uh, and Chatterjee. Okay. Mm, and in fact, the prediction uh, for the upcoming cycle is also based on uh, this idea, okay, that poloidal field keeps the sunspot. So uh, we have uh, found a very interesting result, okay, uh, that we, we will show that we can, in fact, ex uh, you know, uh, uh, predict the polar field uh, uh, from the rise rate, sorry, predict the amplitude of the next cycle from the rise rate of the polar field, okay? You don't have to wait for the minimum, okay? So you can, so here is a, mag, uh, a magnetic field uh, 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 observed on the surface, radial magnetic field, okay? We have a lot of uh, 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 details, but ignore that. And this top and bottom panel, so the solar cycle, okay? Just guide. Now you see that that polar field, the field near the pole, it reverses at the time of solar maximum, okay, here at this time. So the first half of each cycle is used, the transport, I mean, transport decay and produce poloidal field. So first, using the first half of each cycle, the poloidal field is produced and, and then it reverses the old field, okay. Look, the poloidal field, the new poloidal field needs to reverse the old field. Then only it will develop the, uh, the poloidal field for the new cycle, okay. 
so the in the in uh, so near the min maximum of a cycle the polar field uh, reverses and then slowly it it grow okay so we have actually measured the rise rate okay how rapidly the polar field grow that is strongly correlated with the amplitude of the next cycle okay now <laughs> we have three data point and in fact uh, people make a joke that astronomer fit a straight line with two data point here we have three data point so we can uh, safely uh, fit straight line but uh, uh, we cannot do uh, better than this based on observation because we have three uh, solar cycle okay so here we have one polar field data one solar cycle another so three cycle and for this cycle we have polar field but we don't have the amplitude of the cycle so we have only three data point okay so for this is red is for north black is for south okay only we can say that you have a tight correlation of course it doesn't uh, uh, you know uh, say the robustness of this but we try to understand this uh, from the dynamo model and we find that there is indeed a strong and robust uh, uh, relation uh, um, that the amplitude uh, uh, of the cycle is actually uh, uh, related uh, to the rise rate of the polar field okay just you need to observe how rapidly the polar field is building okay so with that we can predict the amplitude of the next cycle okay so this is the cycle 25 the solar cycle has already reached this much so we took the polar field data during this time okay when like during this time okay during this time okay when the polar field was was just increasing with just the the rise rate of the polar field is taken to predict the amplitude of the cycle 25 okay so you don't have to wait for the minima we can actually predict the uh, amplitude from the uh, uh, few years before the minima okay now interestingly as i said the solar cycle has passed two years okay uh, uh, from the after the minima okay and there is a relation something called walmer effect you know uh, two uh, it says that the strong cycle rise rapidly okay it's a very popular uh, effect uh, which is known for like 100 years okay uh, uh, well my effect if a cycle is strong it rises rapidly okay somewhat uh, very obvious but this is the fact okay so we have a very strong uh, correlation so we can then predict because the solar cycle has passed two years after the minimum just by computing the how rapidly the cycle is rising we can predict the cycle that's what we have done and we got this value and interestingly we see the prediction made from the rise rate of polar field and prediction made from the Walmire effect, WE2, Walmire effect, they coincide. Okay. And the, the, the rise rate of the transport cycle is can be obtained for the last previous uh, for previous cycle also. So we took that and we fit and we check how the prediction works. Okay. So you see that for most of the cycle, prediction you know, largely hold. So it gives a gives a confidence and also gives a support that the prediction made from the rise rate of the polar field, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, also uh, you know, makes sense. Okay, and we also check that the polar field rise rate of polar field and the rise rate of the next cycle they are uh, 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 correlated. Okay. So that means that the Walmire effect, which says that a strong cycle rise rapidly, this is actually hidden in the rise rate of the polar field. All right, so I'm going to uh, complete this, just a, uh, one comment that the question is that how long we can predict, okay? Because I said that the, you have the input, the poloidal field, the radial component of the, of the poloidal field is known. Let's say for cycle n, this is the input. Then the question is, as the dynamo is a loop, the question is, can you predict multiple cycle? Okay, because the polar field gives toroidal field for the same next cycle that gives transport. Toroidal field gives the poloidal field. That poloidal field gives the toroidal field for the n plus two cycle, and the cycle continues like a chain. The question is, can you predict many cycle? Okay, the answer is that it's not easy because we have some random component. Okay, in this part, the toroidal to poloidal part, and there's some nonlinearity I discussed already. Okay, so this nonlinearity and the random uh, kick, they break this relation. And, uh, and then uh, we can only make 
some reasonable prediction and that may not be even uh, even uh, 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 perfectly uh, uh, correct because that may be a problem probabilistic if the randomness is very strong then then the prediction can be even uh, 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 violated okay okay so here are my conclusion so we have uh, uh, discussed three potential candidates for the nonlinearity in the Babcock Layton uh, uh, type uh, solar dynamo model. So the first one is the tilt quenching, the tilt of the bipolar magnetic region has magnetic field dependent, and then the uh, toroidal flux loss due to the uh, uh, rise of magnetic field through magnetic buoyancy. Okay, and then uh, the latitudinal uh, variation of the uh, bipolar magnetic regions that's called uh, lati uh, latitude quenching. Okay, these three are the potential candidate and these all are supported by observation. Okay, finally, we showed that the popular Walmart effect is hidden in the previous cycle polar field. The rise rate of the polar field after reversal can be used to make the prediction of the next cycle. Okay, these extend the scope of the solar cycle prediction too much earlier than the usual uh, time of prediction okay and uh, here is the our uh, prediction based on the rise rate of polar field and the uh, rise rate of this ongoing cycle thank you so let's thank uh, vidya for this wonderful presentation and uh, talk so now uh, we have time for question and answer so please uh, raise your hand or uh, put your question in the chat box. The students are encouraged to ask the questions more because uh, it will allow uh, for better interaction. So. Hello Vidya, I have a question yeah, yeah. from this yeah. slide itself. Uh -huh. If you see this you, uh, number of solar um, spot pattern, and if you see the major number over a last five, six cycle, this number is decreasing. I mean, this peak yeah. is decreasing. Yeah, I mean, even you are, this, this is the, you know, strong cycle, this upcoming cycle is a strong cycle. Even you have the, you know, smaller number than the, you know, two cycle, 23 and 22, yeah. 21. Yeah. And if you go back 19, only there are two, you know, weak cycles, cycle 20 and cycle okay. 24. So is there any reason for this? This last five, six cycle, it is going down in general? Yeah, I mean, uh, so of course it is say, uh, if you see the very simple picture, it is, it is the, I mean, it's, it's basically a loop. The cycle in polaroidal field give the total field cycle n plus one, okay? that gives sunspot so for n plus one and then there's that sunspot give the polaroidal field for the same cycle that polaroidal field give the total field for the next cycle that is the sunspot for next cycle and then the loop continue okay so you get, go from like cycle n to like n plus you know all this number okay now uh, the point is it's not a really the determinating otherwise you could predict all the cycle okay if one cycle is weak it doesn't mean that all the following cycle will be weak okay there there are some you know, uh, you know there is a part which largely uh, you know uh, involves some randomness and some non linearity okay so uh, so here uh, so you can uh, think, in fact, I have a uh, better picture if, you, if I go the first picture, for example. So here you see the last three cycle was constantly decreasing, okay, cycle 22, 23, 24, okay. So this means there's not much uh, this randomness, okay, it's not breaking that uh, uh, breaking uh, that loop uh, or disturbing that loop uh, too much, okay, but it will not continue forever, okay, it, it, it has to, you know, uh, because it's it is it, it's, it's more than just a simple loop okay so uh, uh, there are non linearity okay as i said like if a weak cycle weak cycle have a, a bm uh, sunspot near the equator and then equ near the equator sunspot are very efficient in producing polaroidal field so it will tend to produce uh, make the next cycle strong okay so uh, uh, so so it will it will break this it is going to break this chain okay so a lot of mechanism are there okay so uh, otherwise you cannot just simply fit and make the tail that next cycle is going to be weak in fact some people actually do that they, they, they claim that next cycle is going to be weak and we are going to enter into like a dalton minimum like phase and all but uh, that will be too dangerous 
Of course, there is some memory. You see that here also. You some you see some train. Yeah, okay. there is no long term, long term. Yeah, some long term train is there. Okay, so I, I actually I did not discuss one paper. So we find that there is some memory. Okay, I mean this this chain. I said change. This change is not completely violated. Okay, this chain is not completely disturbed. This chain. This chain is there. Okay, it is not completely spoiled by the randomness and the uh, uh, and the nonlinearity. Okay, we believe that the solar dynamo operate near uh, uh, the critical targets, and that means the solar dynamo is weakly nonlinear system. I mean, that's what we believe. Some people don't agree. Okay, but we have uh, some understanding that this that probably the solar cycle uh, is governed by weakly nonlinear process. Okay, or in other words, the solar uh, dynamo is operating very near the critical dynamo transition. So this 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 change is chain is not completely disturbed. Okay, there is some memory that is actually propagated, and that memory is constantly disturbed. If the disturbance too much, then next cycle is going to be too much different. Okay, okay, yeah. I understand the point. Uh, I have a quick question also. I mean, when we say the strong cycles, we talk in terms of the you know, number of sunspots. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Have any coalition with the solar flares also? I mean, if yeah, you yeah, have yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, I cannot show a plot now. But yes, yeah, strong uh, uh, cycle. In general, there is a correlation uh, that strong cycle have actually uh, larger uh, number of uh, flare. But again, the uh, for last uh, this, this cycle, uh, uh, yeah, Vibhuti or who is there in the audience, maybe they can give a better answer who works on flare. Actually, for uh, last cycle, it was uh, somewhat uh, very strange that the cycle was weak, but we get a lot of, you know, uh, expectedly large flare. Yeah, high energy flares. So, yeah. Uh, okay, Vibhuti, please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks, Vidyada, for a uh, like, nice talk for a relatively complicated subject. Uh, I have a question like uh, you mentioned about the three different uh, like uh, non-linearity in the yeah. like particularly in, uh, from the conversion of toroidal field to the colloidal field and all of them have some observational evidences. Yes. Right. So, but in the simulation, like in you have mentioned, like you have used three separately, not three of them simultaneously, even yes. though all of them is operating simultaneously, I guess, if it is uh, like we have uh, observational support for all of them. Then they must, they are must operating simultaneously in the sun. Yeah, so, is yeah. there any attempt to include all of them at a time in the simulation, or it is complicated for the like simulation point of view? Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. This this is a good point actually. So uh, we have a simulation in this three D dynamo mo uh, model, the stable model, where the tilt quenching is included and the latitudinal quenching is is included actually it is not included by hand okay we just need to apply a very simple trick and it uh, automatically uh, is produced okay so these two are included in a model but this one not included in the in the same model so i'll show a plot here here only this latitudinal quenching is is there uh, you see the strong cycle like here strong cycle the bmr are produced at the high latitude okay I mean, uh, uh, on an average, the BMR uh, latitude is high. Okay, we cycle the BMR produces low latitude, but the tilt quenching, not in this run, but uh, not in this simulation, but in other simulation, we have included tilt quenching as well. But uh, but the flux loss uh, due to magnetic buoyancy, that is not included in that model. We have some technical uh, challenges in that model, okay? Uh, so uh, we have not included that, uh, uh, okay. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's the answer. We have not included that. Uh, it is included in a separate, uh, separately, and we just show that uh, this this play an important role. Uh, so it is a computational difficulty to include all of them. We, uh, yeah, I just okay. I mean the, I mean uh, in near future, of course, I uh, will include all three. Uh, but our main aim was just to actually identify the role of individual uh, uh, nonlinearity. So mm -hmm. I was not very, uh, you know, in fact, serious to capture all the uh, nonlinearity at the moment. It's very recently we just realized this one. Okay, just paper. The paper has been just submitted. Okay. But follow-up uh, study uh, can be uh, done to capture all.
all three in a module. Okay, thanks. So probably on that line, maybe someone can take up this project and uh, some student can take up the project and work on this. That yeah, yeah. Question. Yeah, and uh, with the, you, you showed uh, uh, this prediction slide where you have solar flare predicted uh, last slide, I think. Uh, yeah. So that, so yeah. When is it speaking? It 2025 yeah. or when? According to uh, the peak. The peak is around 2025. Yeah, peak is around. So, Pavan, you can read around 2025. Yeah, I'm actually, we have mentioned this in the paper. Okay. But we, uh, we, uh, I uh, forget. Uh, yeah, late, late 2024. Yeah, late 2024. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, um, uh, is there any other future prediction also, like uh, beyond 2030 or? Yeah, so this is an important point that uh, uh, um, can we, uh, I mean, are we brave enough to predict the you know, multiple following cycle? Okay. Mm -hmm. But as I said, it will be a little risky number, mm -hmm. okay. because there is some memory, but the memory is always disturbed by mm -hmm. this randomness okay so yeah. we can predict with some probabilistic uh, you know uh, approach mm -hmm. but uh, but uh, i we believe that it has uh, uh, not much use because if we let's say the our next cycle next to next cycle which will peak in uh, 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 30 let's say 6 38 years okay in uh, 2038 okay uh, 2035. So uh, by that time, you know, our technology are changing. We have a lot of plans are changed. So if we, I mean, people will not even take it very seriously what is going to be the amplitude of the you know, mm -hmm. next next cycle. And we can, of course, I think we should better focus on the accuracy of the prediction. Okay, mm -hmm. instead of predicting too long, which is not very reliable. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what you know. I as a you know uh, theory uh, point of view think that we should have a better you know control better you know constraint okay better yeah, you know, uh, yeah <laughs> chance of predicting rather than something which you do not know very well yeah 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 okay so if there are no further questions so let's thank again uh, our speaker vidya and uh, vidya we hope that you will be able to come to Aries sometime later yeah. And uh, there was some. There's one comment in the chat box from Anna. Uh, she's saying excellent, uh -huh. interesting results. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Yeah. Okay, so thanks, Vidya, again. And with this, we'll close for today. And uh, see you in the next time. Thank you, thank you all for listening to the talk. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay, bye.